Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another stream. Welcome back to another video. Yes, welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Um, yeah, good morning. It is still morning here. What are we doing? Well, we're continuing the build of the turpits. That's this big long guy right here. Do, 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 do. It's real hard to fit in the screen, but yeah. The one 350 scale Tirpitz by Tamiya, uh, specifically German battleship Tirpitz. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So last time was basically just the unboxing and getting to getting to know the model a little bit, and that's about it, right? That's really all we got done. This big long heave. This is how big it's going to be. It's about that long, about yay long, right? It's a big guy. Yeah, no, I'm not in. Um, anyway. So, what did we do? We put these pieces on, we put these pieces on, we put these pieces on, and I painted the whole thing with the Mr. Surfacer, I think it's 1500? Yes, Mr. Surfacer 1500 gray. That's what this is, nice primer. It's a primer, so that's what we've done, okay? So, I've also gone through and, you know, I got a couple of messages on my last video regarding the photo edge and how I keep saying that I hate doing photo etch, it's a pain in my ass, and blah, 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 blah. You know what? It's like I was saying to my friend the other day, it's like mowing the lawn. I don't enjoy doing it, but I enjoy the finished result and the way it looks when it's done, right? Um, but it's a necessary evil. It needs to be done, and it looks good when it's done. It's just tough to do, right? <laughs> Not that mowing the lawn is tough to do, but... It's, it's a process, and yes, so that's basically it. It's not that I hate photo etch, it's just that it's not my favorite thing to do because it's so tiny and, and intricate, and I'm not all that great at it, right? It takes me quite a while to take, um, let's give you an example here, to take, where is my sheet that has it? Okay. To take one of these guys, okay, subcontract the photo etching. Yeah, that would be fantastic. <laughs> so to take a piece like this, okay, right here, take one of those and turn it into this is quite the chore. I don't know if my camera will, I'll try and show you here. Um, the, <laughs> the finished product. If my camera will focus, I know my camera will focus, it just sometimes is stubborn. My camera does have the ability to focus that close, but it doesn't like to do it for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know, there's nothing there to stop it from focusing. Sometimes it just won't. Oh, there we go. Finally. So, there's that. See, to turn it into that thing um, from that little from that little thing you know <laughs> yeah it is tiny <laughs> yes you well, it is very tiny um, so to go from this thing to folding and folding and folding and tiny you finally have that tiny little gun um, that takes some time and it takes a lot of effort and um, yeah, it is a long process. And on this thing, you've got these, I don't, I can't even remember what they're called. Let me see. I don't, to me, his instructions will, will help me out. And what they are called, um, I'm pretty sure they show them somewhere here. Maybe not. I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> Where are they on the build? Um, what do they call them? They don't have a name for them. They're basically the... Uh, I don't know the name for them. They, they're these things. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they're like a big spool. For, for a cable. Is spool the name? I'm not sure. 
Anyway, there's these guys. Okay. Um, I actually have to... This is not part of the kit. I've got the photo etch part that goes on the bottom. And then... Hey, Mr. Bean. Um, and then you've got this little piece in the middle here. So what I did... That doesn't come with the kit. It doesn't come with the photo etch kit. They want me to use a piece of... Um, just round plastic stock and put that in the middle there and to make a whole bunch of these like maybe about a dozen of these things okay um, and I don't like that stuff I don't like doing that super tiny stuff um, I would rather just have it already done like when you look at the deck you've got four of them here these are already on there it's molded as part of the kit right so what the photo etch kit would want me to do is shave those off clean, nice and smooth, and replace them with photo etch pieces. I don't really see too much of a need of actually replacing them. So what I've done is I've added detail to the ones that are actually on the kit. I took the two the side pieces from the photo etched and I glued them onto the edges. So if I can get this to show you here, this is a little bit easier for you. Um, try and center it and hopefully it will focus so you can see I've put the photo etch on this on the edges of it to add the detail to it because otherwise on the kit it's just smooth it's completely smooth and there's no detail but the photo etch actually adds some detail so I glued those on to add that texture it's basically adding texture right and uh, so those are glued on and then to add the detail on the top what I did was I just take my knife and scribed over top of it to give the illusion of cables actually running or going around it, right? Around that uh, spool. And so I've done that to all four of these. And there's actually a couple here on the, the mid deck. Um, I'll show you there, there's one there, and then there's another one on this side too, okay? And I did the same thing on these. But of course I only had to do one side because you literally can't see the side that goes against the, the hull. And I've had some photo etch here for the uh, portholes um, along the edge there. And that's basically what I've done this week. And other than just getting things prepared and figuring out how this whole thing is going to get going and uh, to see what my next step is, what I need to do, um, how much of it am I going to use, how much photo etching compared to what's just going to be a kit part. Um, that kind of thing that's basically going through how is everything going to look how does it all go together um, how am I going to paint it that's going to be another big big thing to do so here's a part of the deck this goes on in the middle here okay um, which way do you go you go like this and you sit down on top of there that's going to go there like this okay just like that but we actually have these pieces here. Took these off of the, the sprues so that I could see how this is gonna fit together. And it's gonna be a lot of trial and error. How does this kit go together and where and at what point do I add the photo etching and when do I paint it, right? So these have the holes already marked out to fit on those. So they fit on nice and this fits in its centers. And then it's this nice, uh, what do they call it, anti-slip plating onto that that normally wouldn't even be here on the kit there's no nothing molded on it at all and the same with this whole area here so as you can see uh, I've got some scuff marks because I've removed some of the details on this um, on that part because we have this piece nice big piece here folded up the railings so the railings are on, they're, they're there, of course there were no railings on the kit. Um, this sits down right over top like that. Okay, now this is wood green. Now I know there's, there's a, a wood kit out there to put actual wood decking on there. And I know it's, it's popular, it's a lot of, I see a lot of videos out there of guys adding that wood decking on there. But I don't know, if you add the wood decking, that's going to make it a little difficult to add weathering because the deck kind of has its own pre-weathered design on it. 
and so yeah anyway so that's this and this is the wood decking so this has to be painted in the the wood tan color while this is more of the dark dark gray um, so yeah so that's this and this and we've got that that's going to be ready I'm not obviously I'm nowhere near ready to actually glue this down and and put that on because there's other things to do what I just actually finished up this morning was this little piece that runs across here okay and adds all these tiny little I don't know even know what they're called um, wires <laughs> things that point out on the front there you can see them as I shine the, the, the nice gold metal um, of course this whole thing is going to get that deck color I've shaved down the fake chains for the anchors so that's all smooth there's no more chain detail there because I'm actually adding some metal chains and that's these guys I showed you guys in the last video um, these little chains here right so I'll be adding those chains but that'll be after it's painted and that's about it so what I want to get done today today I want to get done at least within you know I've got about an hour or so um, I want to get started on assembly of the main guns that's going to go at least on the on the forward deck and uh, start that and uh, just start getting that built as far as painting this um, I want to get the the lower hull painted red um, so I don't want to just paint nonchalant I do want to mask off the upper line so that I'm not painting I don't want to try and paint the gray over the red you know what I mean um, so I do want to mask it the last thing probably is going to be the black stripe that goes through there that'll be last but I'll get this done I'll get that painted it's, I don't need to show you how you guys know how to spray paint right with a rattle can that's all I'm using I'm not even airbrushing it um, I'm just going to be using the Tamiya dull red um, the TS-33, that's a perfect color for the lower hull. Um, yeah, so, let's take a look at our guns. We've got the, attaching the front deck, we've got our 38 centimeter turret. That's what they call it, and so we want E-17. Is this E? That's F. Here's E, 17. I'm going to change my glasses. I apologize now if you can hear my air conditioner in the background. Um, if I turn my air conditioner off, my room will become 30 degrees. Of course, that's Celsius. Sorry, American guys. I don't know what 30 is in Fahrenheit. It's probably about 100. Uh, or maybe, I guess, around 90. Anyway, E37, and then I need F34, so I do need an F3. 34 and 35. Let's see here. Well, here's 35. I guess I need two 35s and then the 34 to put them together. There's 34. All right. So let's clean these up. there is some photo etching detail to add to the turret so I'm not going to glue any well I'm not going to paint anything on the turret yet because I've got photo etching to add to it this is where my trusty old razor file would come in handy no I know this isn't a Gundam but for cleaning up nub marks and seam lines this thing is fantastic 
So even you ship modelers out there who don't want to go the route of actually, yeah, you can buy metal metal guns, right? And why? Because you don't have to worry about seam lines that way, right? And the metal, you know, those aluminum guns, you can, gun barrels you can buy, they're nice and straight, perfect. But you know what? If you just spend a little bit of time, you can get a decent looking gun, gun barrel out of plastic. It just takes a little more work. It also depends how's how's it going to be displayed. Is this something that you're never going to get closer than two feet away from? Then it doesn't really matter. The other advantage, of course, I understand with the, with metal barrels is they're hollow, and where this one, if I want to give it some realism, I need to drill that hole out. And so that means I got to decide what size drill bit. I want to put a little dent right here in the center, as close to the center as I can get it, as kind of a pilot for my drill bit. There we go. So now, choose a drill bit that's going to be small enough. So I did, I had this one in there ready to go because I went through and I drilled out all the portholes along the side of the hull here. So these are actually now all holes, right? It's, you can see them through on this side on the inside here, right? These are actually holes now and not just fake little, uh, fake little divots in there. They're actually holes, just like they're supposed to be. Realism, right? That's what we want. Realism. So we have all kinds of tiny little drill bits that come in this kit. These are all too big, except maybe this one might work. This one might be a good one to at least do as a start. Uh, I don't need to drill all the way down the barrel. I only need to go in maybe even just an eighth of an inch. Just so that it actually is got something there. So I know the The guy that is paying me to do this probably appreciate the little added detail to make sure that this is Just going to carve a little bit better. So you have to keep double checking because the moment you start going off center or you start getting crooked, yep, you're going to have a bad day. So I don't think I've even gone an eighth of an inch in this and it already looks a lot better that there's a bit of a, you can tell there's a hole, right? And that's the main thing. See right now it's just solid flat across Right, and that's gonna look like crap. Even though you paint the tip black, 
It's not. It just looks like it looks stupid. And so I understand. I get it. I understand why guys use metal turret barrels or gun barrels, whatever you want to call it. And that in itself, that looks better. Just like that. That looks a lot better. I can't show you on the camera. The camera's not going <laughs> to... This camera's not going to focus. And uh, this camera's not good enough quality <laughs> to actually show you the hole. But I guarantee you there's now a little, a little hole in there. See? <laughs> See, it, it holds because there's a hole. All right, so I'm happy with that. I think I'm just gonna leave this bit out for future um, barrels that I need to. Need to drill. So. this out and ready to go. Okay, there. Okay. So, back to our actual main turret. Clean this up. Now there are some details on the turret itself. I believe the photo etch kit wants me to get rid of. And replace it with the actual photo etch part. So let me just refer to those real quick. I think I put them right here. It's this right here. So when we're looking at this, we have a little molded on ladder right there to go down the sides. They want me to remove this upper part, shave that off clean, because we're actually putting on another ladder. There's a ladder in the photo etch kit that's going to replace this one, okay? And then we're gonna add a couple of photo etch parts. So just a couple little plates that are gonna go on the front here and here. And uh, yeah, two here, one that goes here. And then we've got our little plastic pieces that go on the side here. And there's a couple of photo etch pieces that are going to go on that. And so that's that. And then we've got a photo etch part that they want me to put on top of these two little antenna guys. So, and one thing I am going to be doing, um, the kit doesn't have them. And I talked to my customer. Um, for realism, he would like the blast bags added. And so I will be doing that. So these two go like this. And then it goes in like that so that allows you to move these independently, like that, like that. But, uh, he would, I suggested, I asked him if he preferred the gun barrels to be movable, or if he would prefer the me to actually sculpt the blast bags that go in there, um, that you see were actually used on, especially on these main guns. Um, and he would like it to be as realistic as to the real tr real ship. So I need to go to the store and buy some putty and get my sculpting skills going. Not that I have any sculpting skills, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. That about sums it up, right? So let's get this guy glued down.
Just glue it in there, just like so. And it's probably a good angle to have the gun, the barrels, It'll be like that. You know, to show you on this camera, so it's not quite, not quite, you know, just angled up a little bit, right? I think it's going to be the coolest look. Sitting like that. You don't need to be straight down. Maybe that's a little too high. Maybe a little lower is nicer. big decision, right? At what angle do you want to have them? What's going to be the most aesthetically pleasing? You know what I mean? Maybe up. Maybe up just a little hair more. too low. What do you think? Right? Just a little... I've got them almost horizontal and I think that's a little too low. It's going to be looking a little better just up. I may have had it better the first time around. That's, that's probably pretty good like that, right? Just It's angled up just a little bit. Another thing they want me to do is glue a piece onto here, but I kind of want to have them removable so that I can paint, remove, put it back. Okay, it looks good. Yep, okay, okay. Paint the details, put that back on. You know what I mean? Because if I have this so that it's permanent, now I need to paint in there while I gotta move this and paint and then I wanna get in on this side of this thing to paint in here or right in here and this thing's in the way, right? So it's things like that that's, make, that's basically gonna make this kit um, one of my most tedious kids. I think the gun barrels are at a good good height. I just need to make sure they are level and not one higher than the other. I think we're good. Maybe this one could go just a little higher. Just a touch. I think that's good. Now you guys might understand why. Um, you know, I've, what have I done today? It's been 45 minutes and I've done nothing except put two barrels on the gun. And that's been, that's this kit. So I'm going to glue these in permanent because when I put in the sculpt to put in the, the blast bags, I'm not going to be able to move the barrels anymore anyway. But having them already glued in is going to make life easier because then I don't have to worry about accidentally debonding them while I'm trying to sculpt with the putty. So there we go. So those are glued in and that's going to be it for that. So what is, for moving on, now that that's assembled, 
we move on to have a look at the actual instructions, they want me to glue F2 down. That's going to be going here and here. That's the chain spool. <laughs> and they want me to glue the anchors down. But they also want me to glue this down to the hull. But I'm not ready for that, right? So those kind of details I need to wait because especially these little spools, they are going to be painted their own little colors. If I put them down now and then I spray paint the, the deck, then I'm going to wind up having to paint those again. So I'll do those after. Um, what I can do is number F32. F32 is a couple little spools that are going here and here. So let's find the F tree. I forgot to mark this tree off last time. So I need F32. It's these guys. See these? This is a perfect example. Okay. Of uh, is it worth the extra detail from the photo edge, or is the kit part basically good enough? So if I clean this up, get rid of my, okay, make this look nice. How much better? does the photo etch piece look in comparison to this? That is going to be the big question, right? Now, I already, I already know the answer to this one. If this was a Revell kit, I know there's a Revell kit for this ship, and it seems to be popular, especially there's one guy on YouTube who just went way far and above and beyond in adding detail to his ship. Um, and I'm sure, like, it's a freaking. he's turned it into a museum piece, for sure. Um, the level of detail is just incredible that he's done to that thing. Um, anyway, this is not one of those kinds of kits. Um, this is not going to be a museum piece. This is just going to be displayed on a guy's mantle. Um, so anyway... How much more detail is this compared to this? This is actually a replacement for this, okay? Now, does it add detail? Sure. Um, it definitely does. Is it necessary? Is it going to be a big deal? putting this piece and gluing it down here like that compared to taking this piece and gluing it there okay how much better does that look now I'm going to show you on the other here's my overhead camera okay let's move this down a little bit here how much better does this piece look compared to this it's not much for the 15 minutes it takes to assemble this, the only benefit you're getting from it, really, is the detail on the side of the wheel. The top, you're not getting anything, literally. You're getting no extra detail on that. The only thing extra that you're getting is the detail along that you can see all the spindles of the wheel. Okay. That's literally the only difference. So, what could I do? I could actually take a look at my photo etch. Um, I could take a look at my photo etch and actually maybe file this down or cut a notch in the wheel and actually put one of those wheels on the side, which would add the detail of the spindles. You just wouldn't be able to see through it. 
Or I could suck it up, build another one of these, and put them on. Either way is going to work, right? Either one's going to work. Now, getting this thing to actually fit on there. Is a whole other story. Oh, look at that, it came apart. <laughs> I thought I had it glued, but I guess I didn't. Didn't it? Or at least not as good as I thought I did. These two seem to be glued on to my little plastic tubing, at least half decently. But they were not secured on this nearly good enough. And of course this was the one I was struggling with, trying to line, up, line it up on the holes here. Thank you. So, here's a perfect example of why I'm showing you live the struggles I have with photo edge parts and why it's a pain in the ass because I could just take this it's going to line up, the holes will line up glue done just like that could I add something to this? Sure I could actually take some uh, easy line and I could actually wrap it around there and then this would actually have some string on it because well the real one does right so why not but I don't even need to do that I can do with this what I did with my the other ones that are on the deck and just add a whole bunch of score marks to literally add the detail to it. Of course, you want to be careful. Don't cut your fingers. All I'm doing is just basically describing it. When I paint it, it will actually have detail to it. And will look like there's rope on there. When really there isn't. I will know, and of course you guys will know that there, this doesn't actually have stuff wrapped around it, but it's going to look like it. So that being said, I think you guys already know that I've decided to just use the kit parts for this particular thing. So 
I've already gone through the argument, both with you guys and myself. Just use the kit part. Okay. And so that again is what I need to decide for just about every piece of photo etch on this thing. Now, railings, obviously, I'm going to be using the railings for out of the photo etch uh, because the kit doesn't even come with railings. I believe the Ravel kit does um, come with railings, and of course, they're big, uh, big honking, uh, thick, ugly looking things because, well, that's part and parcel to a Ravel kit. Um, but, yeah. Now, if this kit was my kit, and it's going to be going on my shelf, because I know already where it would go, and how often it's going to be scrutinized and looked at and stuff like that, I probably wouldn't even bother putting this detail on it onto my own kit. I figured this might be a nice little added thing to actually make it look like there are there's rope around this spool. So I figure why not let's do it. And of course doing the easy line would give me the same results. But This is just fine the way it is like this. There we go. So we've got our scribed in lines for this for the rope. two rope spool things. Now, we have, well, it looks like a couple of guns, F-31. Let's take a look at those. I'm probably sure there's going to be a photo etch version of these guns, so let's take a look at the kit parts. F-31. F31. And of course, I had it the right way around first. And that's these guys here. Okay. So let's take a look. These guns don't look bad. There's, I'd say there's nothing wrong with them. This one's got a little bit of flashing on it. It needs to be cleaned up. But um, well, that's actually F30. So, no, 31. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4. 31s, but uh, they want one and one here. So let's take a look at the photo etch sheets to see if they want these replaced, which I'm probably guarantee that they do. <clears throat> let's see here. Somewhere along here, there's probably a point where they want me to replace those. Not on this one. Okay, not on this street. Um, that is the rear. Rear. No. Nope. That's 
the bridge, and the control tower, our funnel, our mast, and the airplane. Okay, so they do not show, they don't show the beginning of it at all. They don't show that part of the deck. They show parts on the rear. Yeah. There's there's our the bow. See the funny thing is on this picture they show up to here, just this front part, and that's it. Right? And nothing back here. I'm sure <clears throat> see they show the middle deck already on here uh, like this it was just like that so they show the, the photo etch that goes up here and they want a spool going here, but they don't show they don't show the guns. So I guess in this case we're not going to be adding photo etch guns. So we're just going to be using the kit parts. So I've hooked my stupid railing onto this because I'm playing around with it. See, I have to re-glue my railing now. Yeah. Okay. So, we put the guns on. But if I put them on, that's going to interfere with the spray paint. So I can't spray paint that. And I can't put it on the hull because i got to spray paint the hull and I've got to I want to spray paint this separate from the hull. So I'm not ready for it, right? So let's uh, take a look. We can assemble more guns, more turrets. And on the rear deck, or what do they call it, the aft, couple of holes here they want me to drill one millimeter holes from the inside doink dink and doink right there it's kind of interesting that they have holes here but nothing it's interesting that they actually went to the trouble of having those holes and rather than just these just being solid anyway um, this is about one millimeter. All right, easy enough. And if I need to make them bigger later, I can. Which I probably will, because they are smaller than these holes. So what I can do is just take this and just do that. At the same time that it kind of gets rid of the burr, it kind of opens up the hole like it's supposed to be. two little holes. Now, let's take a look at our turret. So we got an egg. These are the 38 centimeter turret B. A 15 millimeter turret, sorry, 15 centimeter turret A. So we want 
F-34 and 35, and F-23. Okay. F-23. So it's all off the F-tree, this guy. F-23. This big guy here. This is basically the exact same thing as the turret we made for the front. And I say basically, how about it is exactly the same. So I will put this one together and then I'm going to get going. The other ones are off of the K tree, K15, they were smaller, and then we got F22s, and it's basically just all the same, more of the same stuff, just building three, four, five, six of them. That's all it is, really. So once again, we want to hollow out the, the uh, our little barrel. pretty good. Okay, do the same with this one. Find the center. Looks pretty centered. That's good. You know, so I only go a few turns and then I double check it to make sure I'm still on the right path. And that I'm going in there kind of straight. The last thing I want to do is drill the hole crooked or on an angle or something like that. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. So now I can go move on to cleaning this up. Barrels look nice and round and like they're one piece. Clean this up. Oh, big nub. This guy, even though I don't need to clean up the nub on this piece, it doesn't make any difference. Let's get my razor file. That's another thing I really like about the razor file. You can feel it bite into the you know the nub or the the ridge of the seam line and then as it files it away suddenly it gets smooth which really tells you it's it's finished its job it's really cool which again You guys might be thinking, oh, but that's a, a tool for cleaning up Gundams. Yeah, well, it's multi-purpose, you know? <laughs> it works really well. I love it. Again, I will say, I'm not sponsored by Gun Primer, but that's where you get it from. And they really made a fantastic tool.
don't know if you guys can hear that when this thing bites into that plastic. You hear that zzzit sound. Um, that's the file taking away that excess plastic. Okay. Looks pretty good. Okay. Alrighty, so, once again. That on there. Doing our little test fit. together. Not too far apart now. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, I will glue that down. And then we're going to call it a day. Okay. Done. Just like that. Okay. So I'm going to leave that, let that dry. And uh, that's going to be it for today, guys. I know it's kind of short, but. The good news is, I've got all next week off work, and so I can be basically work on this every day next week. And so even though I'm not getting a lot done in one video, um, I get to upload basically one video every day for the next seven days. Yes. So, with that, I'm going to call it a day, and... I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank you all for coming out. And thank you so much for all the support you guys give me. It's really awesome. Thank you so much. And, um, yeah. So, if you've made it this far in the video, hit the like button. And go over here and subscribe. And that would really help me out a lot. And, uh, of course... You know, hitting the likes and the subscribes, that whole helps with the whole YouTube algorithm thing. And yeah, it really helps my channel and that would be really fantastic. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. And um, if you want to see still pictures of this stuff that I built, um, you can go check out my Instagram. And uh, I'll put uh, links down in the description box below. And uh, so you can check out my Instagram and my Twitter if you feel like going to do that. And if you feel like, you can go on my Twitch. And you can follow me on Twitch, and then you can watch me do this live. And you can talk to me, just like these guys did. And, uh, yeah. So, with that, we're going to call it a day. And uh, that'll be the end. And uh, we will continue on this tomorrow. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to assemble a few more of these today, and that's about it. And, uh, yeah, nothing too special. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Yeah, so... Um, with that, we'll call it a day, and uh, we'll see you guys all in the next one.